Hello, now since the Ohio train crash that put vinyl chloride and other chemicals into the area, I wanted to do a video on it, but I wanted to do one that was sort of as researched as well as possible rather than just saying stuff, so I did a stream on it the other day. So the sciencey bit at the beginning of this is going to be quite long, but hopefully I've got this all right from research. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the other factors, sort of what you might want to do. So um, the main thing released when the train derailed was vinyl chloride. So vinyl chloride is a colourless gas with a sweet odour that is used primarily in the manufacture of polyvinyl chloride PVC plastics. So they're the sort of plastics you'd have everywhere in your house. The exposure to vinyl chloride can occur through inhalation of the gas or through contact with vinyl chloride containing products. Vinyl chloride is a known carcinogen, meaning it has the potential to cause cancer. Long-term exposure to high levels of vinyl chloride in the workplace has been linked to an increased risk of several types of cancer, including liver cancer, agnes coma of the liver, something I can't pronounce, and lung cancer. Even short-term exposure to high levels of vinyl chloride can cause dizziness, headaches, and nausea. Other health risks associated with exposure to vinyl chloride include respiratory problems. Prolonged exposure to vinyl chloride can cause respiratory problems, including difficulty breathing and lung damage. Neurological effects. Exposure to high levels of vinyl chloride can cause neurological effects, including impaired memory, dizziness, and tremors. Skin irritation. Direct contact with vinyl chloride can cause skin irritation, redness, and blisters. Reproductive effects. There is some evidence to suggest that exposure to vinyl chloride may have reproductive effects, including decreased fertility and increased risk of miscarriage. And liver damage. Vinyl chloride can cause liver damage, including liver disease and cirrhosis. Overall exposure to vinyl chloride should be avoided as much as possible to minimise the risk of health problems. Proper safety measures and personal protective equipment should be used in industries that use vinyl chloride. Now, if you'll see, there's a big problem, isn't there, if you have loads and loads of vinyl chloride spilled everywhere where people could be inhaling it and then you burn it off, which creates other poisons, chemicals, which might not be as bad as, you know, vinyl chloride. But now let's look at um, sort of what would happen when you have something like vinyl chloride that gets into the water supply. So, long-term exposure to toxins in river water can have serious health effects on both humans and wildlife. Some of the potential long-term effects of toxins in river water include increased risk of cancer, exposure to certain toxins found in river waters, such as poly polychloral layers of PCBs, basically, has been linked to an increased risk of cancer, including liver cancer and bladder cancer, neurological damage, respiratory problems, reproductive problems, liver damage, a reduced immune function and damage to aquatic ecosystems. Uh, so I'll go over the damage to aquatic ecosystems a bit more in detail because some of these points are basically copies of the previous ones that, you know, lots of these chemicals cause the same sort of diseases. But toxins in river water can also have long-term effects on aquatic ecosystems, including the death of fish and other aquatic life, as well as changes to the entire ecosystem structure and function. So what that means is that, obviously, if all the fish get poisoned and die off, um, that's going to kill the fish. Things that eat the fish aren't going to have food, so they're going to starve, or they'll eat the dead fish that have been poisoned, and then they'll get poisoned themselves and die and affect things up the food chain. So basically, you can wipe out entire food chains and ecosystems if, um, you know, the river-based animals get killed by stuff leaking into the water, like what's happened in Ohio. So, um, the takeaway from this is people are asking me about gas masks. Well, the thing is with the gas masks, they'd have been really good to start with when all of this was leaking out and they were doing the burn-off. Um, but they're more of an evacuation thing of sort of sitting around things, so at this point, if you're still there, I wouldn't worry too much about a gas mask. I'd keep your windows shut as much as possible, keep your pets in and things like that, but I don't think gas masks can do much for you now. Uh, the main thing is I would only be drinking bottled water. I would not be uh, risking drinking anything coming out the tap or wells um, in that sort of regional downriver region, just simply because of the fact that, obviously, as I was saying about ecosystem damage. Also, if you have pets, like we are saying, cats or dogs, don't let them eat anything from the wildlife. You know, if you're taking them on a walk, probably keep them on the lead in those sort of areas because you don't want them eating a dead fish or whatever and then getting poisoned themselves. So yeah, a bit of a bleak video, but there you go. Hopefully this is quite well researched for you. I uh, spent quite a while looking up all the things which weren't sort of clickbaity regarding um, this to try and, you know, actually summarise what all these chemicals do. But the point is that you don't want to be exposed to them.